So far we've examined the very large land-based events that formed the Earth's surface as we see it today. In this video we are going to look at the formations of the oceans and hopefully shed more light on the misconception of plate tectonics and their influence on planetary formations. We begin with the largest of the events, the near impact zone found north of India, and it's time for a new concept, the snow shovel effect on ions. When a coronal hole on the sun points towards the earth, it brings a fast stream of charged matter at earth. Space, contrary to popular belief, is not empty, but rather is filled with free-floating electrons. When a coronal hole on the sun points towards the earth, it sends a faster stream of charged particles at the planet, and we see the approach of these streams in the increased speed of the solar wind, as you see here on this chart. However, just before we get that increase in speed, we get an increase in density as the free-floating electrons in space are bunched up ahead of the coronal hole stream, like snow on a shovel. So when the near impact occurred, there would have been a massive buildup of electricity being directed into the Earth's global electric circuit. The lightning figure in this picture is recognizable to all. This is called a Lichtenberg figure. When the buildup in electric charge reached the Earth, it began to leave large patterns on the ground known as Lichtenberg figures. Here's a video showing electricity forming these patterns in wood. Consider the burned wood as burned ground, then thrown up into the air and out into space, while leaving the telltale Lichtenberg figure in place. We see this clearly in the formations of the Himalayans, for example. When you look up close, you will note that there are Lichtenberg figures throughout the mountains. Here we see a relief map of the Indian Ocean. To the east side of India, you have the Bay of Bengal, and to the west, the Arabian Sea. When we look closely at the two sides of India, we find immense Lichtenberg figures moving away from the impact rims. As the angle of approach increased, energy sucked up massive amounts of material from the eastern Bay of Bengal. As the comet approached the near impact, the arm of energy bent back and then cleared the arched zone that we now see from northern Australia to Indonesia. To the west of India, the Arabian Sea is carved into place as another zone of electricity explodes out as the comet begins to move away. As the kinetic energy rebound prepared to come back and hit the Earth, cracking the Red Sea, the arms of the event can be seen changing location and creating a large cross-curve ridge north to south. This V ridge represents the first connection and the second connection ripping from this initial strike event. Hopefully the pattern will become apparent. High pressure events involve energy in. The waves of heat and electrostatic energy form mountains along the magnetic lines and as the matter comes back to Earth. The escape of the energy carves the Earth's new ocean and lifts the pulverized Earth into the air and space. Africa represents another high pressure event, electricity being forced into the Earth. Consider the event like a pump with a rotation of current. Current in, current out, current in. Now we're looking for the next set of current out. This is an ocean relief map attempting to express the age of the crust, red being the oldest and green being the youngest. This is primarily based on the makeup of the rock and then invoking millions and billions of years to try and explain it. Instead, I propose that the gradient of metamorphosis occurred greatest along the heavily concentrated ridge of plasma that now forms what we know as the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. The energy was concentrated along this ridge, specifically at this place of the planet, where the comet rolled onto the southern half of the planet over the equator. At the midpoint, it burned away the surface from Greenland down to Antarctica, as massive ions flooded out of the Earth, taking immense amounts of pulverized material into space. We will discuss this ejected material in later videos. Here is the S-shaped arc of energy, perfectly situated on the equator, perfectly forming the plasmoid S, cracking the Earth's crust as it melted by the energy as it was pulled in massive waves up from the middle outward. 
Again, it would make sense for this type of an event to occur as the two bodies moved over the Earth's equator and transitioned to the magnetic poles. This shifted the line of the comet to remain just north of the equator and reduce the angle of ascent. In other words, it took a slight right turn as it passed over the equator. If this theory is to work, I will need to identify the center of the event as we did with the strike in North America. We face a significant challenge in that there are inadequate images of the sea floor. However, here along the west coast of Africa, we see the edge of the northern arc. This resulted in the creation of the Cape Verde Islands to the north and left a seafloor depression to the south off the coast of South America. This relief map makes it easier to see. The ridge line represents the plasma arc of ions escaping the crust and pulling the surrounding matter up with it from both sides, fairly equally in the shape of an S. When the event ended, the Earth fell back and violently fractured along the scar. Of the primary influences, the electromagnetic and gravitational influences of the comet drug the crust causing the striations we see. Looking at this more clearly, here is the center of the event, and again, here is the S-shape of the plasmoid ripped into the ocean floor with another plasmoid overlaid. Note that it also reversed the plasmoid rotation to counterclockwise. This is how we can tell the energy was moving in the other direction. Finally, I would like to note, the smoking gun is the 90 degree angle putting the event in electrical science history because it is textbook plasmoid formation. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.